This is Eyewitness News, Sunday night, with Larry Menti, Ann Butler, Jerry Azar, Dr. Bill Gutsch, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening. Here's what's happening. The world is getting mysterious signals from the Soviet Union. They give every indication that Soviet leader Konstantin Chernyenko may be dead. However, there is no official confirmation of that as yet. Chernyenko is 73 and has been in poor health for months. He appeared frail on Soviet TV just two weeks ago. The best indication he may have died comes from the State Department. An official there told me tonight that Soviet radio and TV suddenly began playing somber music tonight. Now that usually signals the death of an important Soviet official. Then tonight, a high-ranking Soviet delegation suddenly left San Francisco, cutting short their U.S. visit there. They're headed now for New York, then on to Moscow. Meantime, I went to the Soviet mission here in New York tonight. Officials there told me they had no information on what was going on. There will be more on this story on the ABC News Weekend Report following Eyewitness News. And The wife and child of a Greek diplomat are victims of a fire at their home in Fort Lee, New Jersey. The fire broke out early this morning. The cause? Smoking in bed. Officials say 45-year-old Kali Kutsubian died of smoke inhalation, as did her four-year-old son, whom firefighters tried to revive. Two other people were rescued, and there's a question about how many families were Just living there. Knowledge, it was a two-family residence. Uh, after our arrival, we then determined that there was more than two families uh, residing in the, in the building. And that is illegal in Fort Lee. The fire chief also says the deaths of the young mother and her son can be partly blamed on the absence of smoke detectors in the house. Meantime, another fire in Neptune, New Jersey, claimed four lives, including those of two young children. Officials say the victims had little chance to survive as the fire raced through the three-story wooden house. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Larry. Well, we have some encouraging news tonight in the Pan Am strike. As McGee Hickey tells us, the two sides are about to resume negotiations. Federal mediator late this afternoon ordered Pan Am officials and leaders of the 6,000 member transport workers union to get back to the bargaining table on Wednesday. This will be the first time the two sides have met since the strike began on February 28th. Pan Am management told Eyewitness News tonight that they're pleased with the National Mediation Board's decision ordering both sides back to the bargaining table on Wednesday. The spokesman told us that they're hoping this means there'll be an end to the strike soon. But here on the picket lines, the strikers told me they're not so optimistic about the National Mediators Board decision. Many told me they doubt that the company really wants to go back to the bargaining table. If they did want to negotiate, why didn't they do it before and prevent the strike in the first place? Because when, when they had the opportunity to, they didn't. They just handed us an ultimatum and that was it. Pan Am, which ordinarily operates about 400 flights a day, has been flying at about a third to one half of its capacity during the 10-day-old strike. Tonight, many passengers told me they didn't want to fly Pan Am, but they had no other choice. We had booked 30 days in advance, however, and no one else would honor our ticket. Mm -hmm. Yes, we really didn't want to cross the picket lines at all, and we didn't want to hassle with this, but we would have changed had we been able to, but we weren't able mm -hmm. to. So while passengers are hoping the strike will be over soon, members of the striking union told me tonight they'll stay out until they get all their demands, which include no pension cuts or job security concessions. Larry? Yeah, McGee, from that reaction, even though they're talking, it would seem like it's still going to be a, a very long I strike. I think it's going to be a long strike. All right, thank you. And there are rumbles tonight from the teachers in New York City's public schools. A Harris poll shows they're the unhappiest in the nation about the conditions on the job. Only 29% say they are very satisfied about their work. That compares with a national average of about 40%. The biggest problems identified by our teachers? Overcrowding and lack of security. Well, still to come tonight on Eyewitness News, a story you should watch if you or someone you know uses an automatic teller machine. It could help you keep your money safe. Also ahead, police ask for your help in finding the person who viciously attacked two women in an elevator. And Jerry Azar with Doug Flutie's debut at the Meadowlands. Dashing Mr. Flutie had quite a game, we understand. Stay with us. Hello there, I'm John Gregson, and this is my New Zealand. Here's where we nourish our New Zealand lamb on mother's milk and fresh meadow grass. Result, incredibly delicate flavor. Quite likely, here's where the most succulent lamb in the world comes from. So you've got a choice. Join Anne and me here, or go to the frozen meat case in your market. Tender New Zealand spring lamb. 
milk fed, grass finished. Get a lot of value at your local Mazda dealers now. Value. Everybody wants it. We've got more of it. In our RX-7, a legendary sports car that's also a legendary sports car value. Our 626, a refined front-wheel drive road car of superior value. Our GLC, an economy car value with an unexpected bonus. Outstanding performance. If you want value, we've got more of it. Get a lot of value at your local Mazda dealers today. I think I'm going to cry. Why? I'm so happy. You mean you've never had a guy tell you he loved you before? Not the right guy. When you open your heart, open the Lancers. Lancers white wine. Dry, crisp, imported from Portugal. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just keep looking like that. When you open your heart, open the Lancers. Cycle! Get your dog physical with Cycle. It's healthy to be physical with Cycle. Cycle gets them feeling good and feeling strong. Whatever their age, you can't go wrong. Cycle Dog Food has four formulas, so there's one with the right nutrition to get your dog as healthy as he can be. It's healthy to be physical with Cycle. Get your dog fine and fit and physical with Cycle. There's a survey out tonight on fraudulent use of automatic teller machines. The survey is a breakthrough because in the past, banks have been somewhat reluctant to share information, fearing it might break the customer's confidence in the system. My informal report tonight shows that may already be the case. Sunday night's always busy for automatic bank tellers. Computer convenience, not, however, without an occasional snafu here and there. Not accepting your deposit or not getting cash, you know, what are the basics of or else putting your card in and then it's, it stops and doesn't give you your card back. Just money not transferring fast enough, clearing into my account. When it says that it gave you money and it didn't. It says it gave you money, but it... No, no money comes out, but they deduct $30 or whatever you take from your um, account. And then you've got to prove that you didn't get the money. But the biggest problem isn't quite so obvious. You might not have realized it, but if this card is lost or stolen, it could end up costing you a bundle. Today, results released from a two-year survey show that out of $262 billion processed through automatic tellers, fraudulent card use totaled losses between $70 and $100 million in one year alone. And although overdrafts and bad deposits might be blamed on unauthorized use of lost or stolen Bad. cards, in almost a third of the cases involving fraud, not the bank, but the customer suffered the loss. The main cause of bank machine fraud is carelessness with personal identification numbers. So the best thing to do is to keep your so-called PIN number in your head and not in your wallet. All right, good advice. Suspected cop killer Alex Mengel could be deported from Canada to the U.S. this week. You'll recall Mengel is accused in the shooting death of a Westchester County police officer and disguising himself to cross into Canada. Police think part of the disguise, a scalp, belongs to Beverly Coupone. She's been missing since February 25th. It was her car that Mengel was driving when he was arrested in Toronto. Eyewitness News will be in Toronto for a hearing tomorrow on the possible transfer from Canadian to U.S. authorities. In Queens, detectives are hunting a man who stabbed one woman to death and then slashed at another. The search is the subject of tonight's Crime Stopper report, a public service of Channel 7, the police, and the New York City Partnership. Bill Butel reports police want to find this man before he attacks again. It, it frightens you that people are this violent for no reason to violently slash a woman the way they slashed at Mrs. Wu and to kill Mrs. Kim for no reason whatsoever. The Oriental community in Flushing, Queens, lives these days in terror. The woman who survived the brutal attack is too frightened to appear on camera. But June Wu remembers the night of November 16th, when she walked into her building with her friend Teresa Kim. There was a young man loitering in the vestibule. He followed them into the building. They pressed the elevator and they waited. And when the elevator arrived, they got into the elevator and they pressed the, he pressed the third floor and they pressed the, the fifth floor. When the elevator reached the third floor, the young man blocked the door with his body and demanded money. Shh, money. Now he pulls out a large knife, and again he says to the women, Shh, money. Money. 
Teresa Kim offered the money. The stranger pulled her to him and stabbed her. And then he slashed out at Jun Wu. At the fourth floor, the attacker escaped down the hall and out the fire exit door. Screaming for help, the two women continued to the fifth floor and called the police. I heard the elevator alarm bell go off. And that's what aroused my curiosity to see what was going on. I then went to the elevator to call the elevator, which I did. And the elevator came and the door opened. It's an automatic elevator. And I saw this huge pool of blood and a lot of hair, as if the hair was either cut or torn. They were both taken to a Booth Memorial Hospital where Mrs. Kim died earlier the next morning. And Mrs. Wu was admitted for a few days. The elevator mugger is described as white, about five foot eight, 170 pounds, in his 20s, with light hair and a mustache. He was wearing a black jacket and blue jeans. This uh, is a particularly violent crime. There's no, no reason for this. I mean, the woman had no money. There was no reason uh, to slash out as violently as this young man did. Police need your help. If you have information on this or any other violent crime, call Crime Stoppers at 577-TIPS. You never have to give your name, and you could be in line for cash rewards of up to $500. 577-TIPS. We can help. Your calls to Crime Stoppers have helped the police solve one violent crime every other day. 577-TIPS. 577-TIPS. The police answer your calls Monday through Friday. This is Bill Butel, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. When we come back, Jerry Azar with Doug Flutie's home opener, and yes, Mayor Koch sings a tune for us. And we'll see what brought thousands of Hasidic Jews out on the streets of Brooklyn today. We'll be right back.